What's up, guys? Tyler Casey here, and welcome to the 22nd episode of Wolf Talk. Um, if you guys are not familiar with the podcast here, I sit down with other creatives, anyone who shoots, directs, edits music videos in the music video field, but not limited to that. I sit down with all types of creatives. And today I have Matt Workman, who is currently designing the game Cinetracer. Is that correct? Yep. Is that how you say it? Yep. The name did change once, at least once. So I understand okay, not yep. knowing yet. Yeah. When I was doing a little bit of research, I noticed... Um, the original game was called um what was it called um cine game was the was the project name oh cine game yeah. gotcha so do you still have the other app running as well that's on cinema 4d um yeah. the plugin is it a plugin yep yeah the the first thing well, that i put out was called cine designer and it is a plugin for cinema 4d that's still it's still around but we haven't been updating it while i've been doing the video game version Gotcha. Okay, cool. So just give me a little bit of breakdown of what the uh, video game Center Tracer is um, and for people who don't know about it. Right. So right now it's an early release, so it's kind of beta. I'll put that out there. But we're basically working with the same game engine that Fortnite uses. It's called Unreal Engine. And if you've ever seen Fortnite Creative or kind of like the building system <coughs> they have, we're basically taking that same type of technology and using it so that filmmakers can then build pretty serious looking sets. And we have cameras that are pretty ph photorealistic and lighting that's getting there. It's going to be better soon, but we're using very modern video game technology, which is starting to look better and better graphically so that filmmakers don't have to draw storyboards and that eventually they can basically quote unquote play together and do uh, pre-production in like a multiplayer environment. Mm hmm. Yeah, that's awesome. I really like what uh, the way you put it about um, the storyboards, because I don't know, that's one th thing that's been always like drawing me back, especially like with music videos, because it's kind of hard to express um, a music video shot um, when you have something in your head, you know, whether it's like with lighting or something like that, it's kind of hard. And then you don't want to, especially in your treatments, you don't really want to rip a bunch of music videos off YouTube because um, I was listening to your podcast with Justin Odisha last night and you were talking about um, like creative law and stuff like that. And I was actually wondering if you steal someone's image off of a um, like off their video for like a treatment as a reference image. Is that is that kind of um, I don't know, frowned upon or can be in trouble or. Well, no. I don't think legally the record labels are going to care. I mean, that's who yeah. you're, that's like who you're probably pitching to. So you're not going to get any mm -hmm. like DCMAs or anything like that, you know, within the industry, is it frowned upon yeah. to like, you know, rip, like, you know, use that as reference. I, I think, I think that really depends. It's also like a pretty small world of the people that write professional treatments for yeah. those level videos. And it's like 10 people. So it's, it, yeah, I think they all pretty sure. much are allowed to steal from each other. And gotcha. But to your point, yeah, I think that, you know, I, I came from music videos and, you know, wanting to, express that kind of stuff it was it's impossible unless you were like a incredible like art, you know 2d artist as well and i do i do keep that in mind when we're you know designing things here and i people always joke like i i always end up making like music video setups because that's what i did for five years i think that's still how my mind works and like i kind of like put someone in the middle of the frame and start building a set around them and then like crane back and forth it's like still my like go-to yeah exactly yeah that's what i um and one of the most fun things, like when I first got into the game, was just being able to run around and just like copy and paste endless quasars everywhere, um, just as practicals. I think that's one of the coolest things. Um, so, uh, just some questions about like the future of the game, because some things that just kind of interest me. Um, what's the plan to like um, maybe like animate and like DMX control some of the lights and the scenes? Is that something that's going to be coming in the future or in the full release of the game? It's something we want. I'm still trying to keep it as simple as possible for as long as possible. And, you know, animating. And as soon as we have a timeline and we're doing cues and animations, it, st it takes on a different form of complexity. So I'm trying yeah. to keep it simple for now. So it's mostly like laying something out and getting an idea out there quickly. But yes, it's definitely within my mental roadmap yeah. to get that kind of stuff going and possibly integrate it to control the live versions, that sort of stuff. It's, um, that would require more people. However, that's, that's a much bigger project dealing gotcha. with artnet programming and hardware integration. And a lot of that stuff is very closed software wise. Like you can't just hop, I can't just start talking to mm -hmm. like an ETC ion board or even really start interfacing with sky panels. Like 
directly. I know that like Luminaire kind of does, but it's it's both a business challenge and then <clears throat> programming challenge to really make that happen. Gotcha. Okay, cool. And then what are um, so what's kind of the market for this game? Is it specifically filmmakers? Because what made you kind of switch from the original plugin that you had for Cinema 4D, which I know you said was a lot more um, expensive in the first investment, correct? Uh, to kind of get into Cinema 4D and be able to set up these lights and do something similar. Um, what was kind of like the shift in that and what made you go towards this direction? Yeah, so Cinema 4D, if you buy the full license, which a lot of the cinematographers end up doing because it has all the features, is like $3,600. So there's that to start. Plus the computer you need to run it needs to be pretty decent. And then my <coughs> plugin's 500. Then you need possibly to get this other plugin to make the lighting faster, just another 500. It gets pretty expensive. And then at the end of the day, it, it takes a lot longer because you're in a 3D animation program. So you have like all the control in the world. You could make Toy Story or like Lord of the Rings in it if you if you had the mm -hmm. time. But it does take a lot longer. And uh, the switch to a, a game engine is that game engines are getting better quality. I tried to do this like a few years ago and I didn't like how, how it looked, so I kind of stopped. And then Epic Games, the company that makes the game engine, actually reached out to me directly and saw what I was doing and they kind of gave me a little help getting started. And I built the demo and it's just you know, working in real-time graphics that look this nice is, it's just really fun. You know, it's, it's much faster. I, I really try to tune the game so that you could get in there and within like 15 minutes, bang out something useful, export boards mm -hmm. and send them to your crew or the director, whoever you want, and then be out of it. Whereas it's more realistic in Cinema 4D to be looking at like, you know, six hours, four, you know, four to six hours at yeah. least to bang out even like something reasonable. But with video games, it's just, it's just rendering constantly and it's, Mm -hmm. it's just so much faster cool that's awesome yeah definitely like i definitely was able to go like a couple nights ago i was just playing and i went into the um the laundry mat and i threw a bunch of quasars everywhere and then was just playing around i got some really cool looks i was pretty excited i was having trouble i like that's the thing too like where you're saying like the more stuff you add it's definitely a lot harder to learn just because like when you uh, because i haven't played it in a while since you've updated and then when you updated, there was just like all this new stuff and I just didn't like, I think I was trying to go through your tutorials and try and learn how to do everything because there was just so much and it's pretty crazy. But yeah, you can definitely bang it out pretty quick, especially if you know like all the controls and whatnot. I was definitely thinking about picking up a um, Xbox controller because I kind of saw that you added that. And I think that would be really nice using like the Techno Crane. Does that work a lot better? With the Yeah, all the cameras are more or less designed directly for the Xbox controller. They they will work with a mouse and a keyboard, but just the way that those mouse and keyboard works, it doesn't lend itself to, you know, that's why you don't like fly a drone with a mouse and keyboard, you know, like when you're flying yeah. your, your Mavic, it's <laughs> it's twin stick, you know, because it's it's perfect. Yeah. So it's it's really tuned for that as well. And, you know, the hope with the, with the Xbox controller too is that like, you know, I really recommend people bring it to meetings if, you know, the director and the producers are like not going to be like too offended by p playing a video game. At the meeting is that you can just give an Xbox controller to most people our age-ish, and they probably figure it out. And I, and I hope that's like yeah. a, a fun thing and fun and helpful, you know. Versus like yeah. mouse and keyboard is still a little bit like not everyone gets down with like you know WASD keyboard games. You know, not everyone plays like mm -hmm. you know shooters and stuff. But I feel like most people, even if they've never touched a, touched a video game, it's like here's the twin sticks. You can figure it out. So that's that's part of the idea too. Yeah. Is that it's like for for very casual users. Um, as a presentation tool, you could just throw the Xbox controller to anyone and they can start running around. Mm -hmm. Sweet. Um, so when I post the video, and every time I post on it, a lot of people are wondering when the game, and I've seen this constantly in your comments, uh, when the game is going to be uh, available on uh, Mac. That will be very soon. I mean, I don't know when this podcast comes out, so it's it's possible that this is uh, it's already out. But we already have a... Uh, very small closed Mac beta, so it confirms works on OS X. Mm -hmm. Now, there's a lot of different hardware specs, and people have very old Macs because they work great. Like, my MacBook Pro is late 2013. That's, it's still, yeah. It still works great, though, but uh, when it comes to video <laughs> games, then it starts to be a, a different story. So we're kind of just looking through, like, different hardwares, and I had to update some stuff. But it technically works, and I'm just trying to get it to be, like, better before you release it onto, like, yeah. a whole new, like, audience. Definitely. Cool. Yeah, and the um, 
Is the multiplayer up and running? Because that's that's a really cool aspect of definitely being able to hop on with just friends um, or the DP or the, um, the director or something like that and just mess around, have a good time, but also get something done and do something creative in that space, which I think is pretty cool. Is that, uh, I saw it's up, but is it, is it working yet or is that not available? That is experimental. That is not work. It, it works. So we have like yeah. the found, <laughs> like you can connect to people, um, and you can both run around in empty room. So that was the first step, which is, was difficult to be honest, to get just that happening. Um, but no, it's, it's not up and running to the point where like gotcha. it's in production, but we have the foundation of it so that when we kind of lock in like all the features we want, then we start to do what's called replicating them. And that means that everyone can do them in a multiplayer space, but the game core fundamentally does have it in there now. Cool. Wow. <coughs> yeah. I'm definitely excited for, um, just future updates on, um, the game. Is there anything cool else that you'd like to talk about? Uh, um, if people don't follow you, they should definitely check out the posts you post on Instagram because they're super interesting. Like every time you post on Instagram, it's either like a new map or just some new crazy feature that I'm super excited about. Like, the two that I recently saw, you added the floppies and that made me really excited because before that I was like grabbing like walls and whatnot yeah. to like, <laughs> um, to use negative fill and block light. Um, but then, yeah, so you added floppies. That was really exciting. And then I also saw you added like the chandeliers as like moving background like RGB chandeliers. So that was definitely really cool. Um, is there anything? And the prison was awesome too. I'm excited for that. That definitely looks really cool. But is there anything in the future that we should be excited for or looking forward to? Yeah, I would say th the big thing is um, the NVIDIA RTX. <laughs> so like if you pay attention at all to like NVIDIA and the graphic cards that are coming out, like the 20 mm -hmm. series, like 2070, 2080, etc. Anything with RTX, all the hype, etc. Uh, for normal video games, that's I don't think it's that big a deal yet. But, but for what we're building, it's a huge deal. So right now we have... Mm -hmm. Pretty good lighting. It looks okay. I think you can get some stuff at least communicated, right? It's just like just to visualize and be like, this is kind yeah. of, this is the idea anyway. With RTX, um, when we get that for Unreal Engine, the technology for it, and when the users have RTX cards, the lighting goes from being a visualization to being like physically accurate, like it is in Cine Designer. <laughs> so you turn on a Quasar tube, it's going to bounce off the ceiling and then the floor, and then it's going to, you know, you'll be able to actually do negative fill. You will actually be able to yeah. put a bounce in there. You'll have sun, sun in, uh, like sky, like coming through windows the way that it would in the real world. So that's, wow. that's the big one. It's going to require some very powerful hardware and it's very early, but yeah. you know, I, I picture that in like two or three years. I'm not sure how long it'll take for it to get yeah. like really, really fast is that you'll be looking at basically photo real environments, dealing with photo real lights and all like on your laptop, you know, with multiplayer. Yeah, that sounds exciting. That's awesome. That's definitely sick. Um, yeah, I didn't mean to say negative fill when I said that. I meant like just like blocking light. Yeah, because I was like trying to, um, I was like, oh, I haven't tried to bounce light yet. And then I didn't know that that like exactly how it worked, you know. Um, so it's like, oh, it's not bouncing, you know. So I was just wondering on that concept. But that's cool. That's definitely something to look forward to. Um, and I think a lot of people would really enjoy this game who follow me because I have a lot of upcoming music video directors. Um, I'm located in the Bay Area right now. So, yeah, it's definitely cool because a lot of people, some people haven't been on like sets like that or haven't even been able to play with that type of equipment. So I definitely, definitely think it's something cool that someone can just hop on kind of just see all these different tools that they could have at their disposal and kind of figure out how everything works especially through watching your videos is the bay area san francisco <laughs> yeah san francisco oh i'm gonna be in san fran in march oh nice cool what are you coming out here for it's a uh, gdc it's the game developers conference so i'm gonna go hang oh, out awesome. with epic games and Sweet. nvidia and a whole bunch of uh, other people and meet other developers and uh do that thing tight that's that's really cool are you going to um are you going to take this game to nab next year do you mean this year i mean uh I'm not i mean this year i don't know any year <laughs> <laughs> i'm definitely not getting a booth because those are like a hundred grand uh in in yeah. central hall but it's 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 possible i'll go there's a lot of people who if i did go we could we could you know hang out and i could probably just hop yeah. on someone else's booth and like throw up a tv they'd be like cool love to have you know people stop by but I, yeah. i'm not really sure you know i'm I feel like my time is best spent 
really just like at the computer developing. And then yeah. like as far as like reach, I just try to be out there. Like I'm on Twitch. I'm on most of the social networks and I try to respond as much as I can. So I think that's the best way of reaching people. Not yeah. not everyone makes it out. I, I kind of like to, but at the same time, I want to just keep pushing this thing forward. Yeah. Yeah, that's cool. Um, one thing that I was going to mention, um, it made me think of it because I was going to say, uh, what, what did someone, I think Digital Sputnik last year, they had like a, uh, I went last year and they had like an offsite like display since it was cheaper. They just rented out like some warehouse and they just had like all their lights, um, the RGB tubes. But yesterday I used the, um, Astera pixel kit. Mm -hmm. Um, and I set a bunch of those out in Cinetracer and I, because I had eight tubes and I want to see what I could do with like eight tubes. So I kind of just had them set up the way I would. And then it was really helpful when I actually got on to set and I had eight tubes. So I could kind of figure out, pick and choose like which scene. So it was pretty, it was pretty nice just being able to, I don't know, visualize eight tube type lights. So that was pretty cool. Yeah, the tubes are fun. Unfortunately, that's one of the lights that's tricky to do with uh, the current mm -hmm. style of the lighting. But at least in pure geometry, it's there. They're not necessarily emitting light correctly, but you, yeah. can, you can hopefully be like, well, we made like a cross here and then we put them in a circle yeah. there. So hopefully it's good for just that for now. No, I've seen, I've even seen people do, um, that's what, that's what eventually I want to do is like do the storyboard and then actually get the shot. And it's pretty crazy. Even like, even though you say the lighting's not perfect and whatnot, it looks really solid. Um, and it's, it definitely gets the idea across, which I think is pretty cool. Nice, nice, yeah, and, and I hope, I mean, I hope that it's empowering cinematographers, but also people that are, might have that idea that aren't the cinematographer, that, you know, mm -hmm. like, even if, like, like, the artist wanted to do it, like, yeah. if they had an idea, and, like, it was just, like, another... I could definitely see that happening. Yeah, it's, like, not like you're, like, they become the DP or something like that, but it's, like, it's just a way that they could be, like, hey, I was thinking this, and instead of yeah. some, like, terrible drawing or something, it's, like, actually kind of close, then you can give your special mm -hmm. sauce over it. So that's, that's what I hope with the multiplayer is like <clears throat> literally have the artist or whoever, you know, just like, hey, let's just like yeah, put up a session. Just, like this is kind of what we're thinking. What would you want to do? And then yeah. they can move it around and it's mm -hmm. not wasting anybody's time on set. That's the hope. Yeah, that's definitely awesome. And uh, one thing that I thought was pretty cool was the popsicle level. Um, I was playing around there. Do you plan on making the ceiling like RGB controllable? Um, similar to like the the actual location i would like to yeah that's like when we yeah. hit when we hit full release which is hopefully something around like september october mm -hmm. 2019 it doesn't mean the game is done it means that like it works because <laughs> like we're like yeah. we're in like kind of beta right now but like you get it it's like it pretty much works because right now there's a lot of issues that we're dealing with and then when we hit full release um i'm gonna start hopefully going around los angeles and new york mostly to start and scanning with LiDAR, like real stages and starting to really just represent wow. what's out there. Cause I mean, there's a lot, yeah. but if I did it for a couple of years, we would have a, a lot of them. And so like, you know, like we popsicle is kind of like a preview of what it is kind of like, mm -hmm. but we want like the whole seat, like the whole stage, like where you park, where the bathrooms are, like just get all that relevant information in there. And then that's awesome. And eventually get the lighting like that too. Popsicle is one of the more challenging ones to get it, mm -hmm. but if I can get it, I would love to. Yeah. Yeah. That's really cool. Have you, um, so let's go a little bit back since we talked a lot about center tracer. Um, can you give the people like a quick rundown of, uh, kind of, or I'm just gonna ask, how did you get into the uh, music video scene? Because I know you were a cinematographer early on and that's mainly what you did, but now you're not so much into cinematography and you're more focusing on developing this game. Um, which I think is really awesome. But can you kind of give us a rundown how you got into cinematography and then made your way to music videos? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, so like 2003, I think I graduated from high school. And music videos back then were like, especially like big <laughs> hip-hop videos, like MTV was basically, if people would know what MTV is these days, I don't even know. But MTV was like, you know, like most expensive music videos. And it was like, there was just channels dedicated to music videos. It was like, all it was there were like five dedicated channels music videos like 24 7 there was behind mm -hmm. the video like with like joseph khan doing <clears throat> britney spears and like just just so much this i think this is like right as napster was starting to like kind of collapse the music industry but there was still so much money in it and there's like crazy budgets really cool stuff and that was you know that had a big impression on me in high school so i wanted to shoot those but i lived in boston massachusetts there's not 
a lot of music videos happening there. But I ended up just hopping on Craigslist and I got my friend's VX2000, the Sony camera. That's like a, mm -hmm. like a de facto like skateboarding camera back in the day. Yeah. And we just started shooting hip hop videos. And then I bought a DVX100, which was a first mm -hmm. 24p video camera. And just, just hopped on the internet and looked for people that wanted that to happen. MySpace, Craigslist, and just started shooting them and making a reel. And it was a lot of Boston artists. And then through MySpace, I got connected with some up and coming directors. And it just kind of went from there. Um, and just, I eventually got flown out to LA while I was still in college to shoot like a 40 grand <coughs> KRS one music video called Hip Hop Lives. I think it's on the internet mm -hmm. somewhere. So that was cool to shoot like for like, you know, uh, at the time for me, like a, a big artist, like a known artist. And then I moved to New York City. Uh, I had like not a lot of money. I had like a camera. And mm -hmm. again, just Craigslist and just made my way into the scene, just shooting and shooting. Shoot for free, like PA for free, uh, shoot mm -hmm. stills on bigger sets, which is like was a great thing for me. Like I think with Instagram now, that's well, it's it's both more open and closed because there's a lot of like closed sets these days because people are leaking stuff on on social. Yeah. But I used to go and just like take photos on set and they'd be like, does anybody want these? You know, because like, I, mm -hmm. I got invited on to a couple bigger sets. I'm not anywhere near the DP. They're shooting 35. Like I still have like a DVX 100. I'm like, I don't even mm -hmm. know how that camera works. Like, <laughs> but I was, I was just. And how old were you at this age? This is uh, like uh, right out. Of, this would have been like right out of college. So okay, cool. 20, something like that, maybe. Awesome. And that's. So you're on that. That's pretty much. Hustle right there. Yeah, that was pretty much it. Like real indie stuff. But then yeah. eventually it's a small world and basically DSLRs happened and yeah. I was right there. You know, I was like, I was like, oh, these like instantly bought them, started using them. Mm -hmm. And we were some of the first, like some of like that first, first wave of DSLR people. And some of my friends went into sports with it. Some, in, you know, extreme sports filmers started using them. And I was like, how many music videos? And we shot some of like, we shot like the first like Diddy video with the 5D and like mm -hmm. ludicrous, just like all the hip hop. East Coast people, we just shot all that stuff for them, Def Jam, and we just flew around and didn't know what we were doing, but the cameras were looking good, and I just kept just going towards it, and it's a very small world, and I think people kind of respect just, like, being there. Like, it's like, oh, I've, yeah. I've seen you before. It's like a year mm -hmm. later, it's like, oh, you're still here? And the next year, it's like, oh, you're still here? Like, I, I, I see that. Mm -hmm. I respect it even more now as I've kind of, um, you know, changed industries and, and moved around it's like oh someone like this person is serious and i tried to be that person and it, it goes a long way just like do it for like five years like mm -hmm. all the time and i like get known for it yeah because i think a lot of times people um get discouraged when things don't pop off right away and they kind of whether it's whatever they're trying to get into music videos directing editing and they're not getting the gigs that they want to but even i've was kind of looking back on like when i first quit my job and been doing um, music video directing. I've been kind of doing a little bit of YouTube full time now. And then just like some other freelance gigs, whatever I can do. Um, and it's only been three years and some of the artists that I've been working with, some of the sets that I've been on, it's been really cool just within three years. So um, that was pretty interesting. And definitely if you, the longer I've stayed in it, the more that I've felt like the same thing, especially when you get hit up and you're in the scene a little bit more. I think that's pretty useful. And I like the way you uh, put that. Yeah, like if you're, you know, if you are still shooting like that type of video in like five years from now, like you'll be known, like they'll all know you. It's just, it's, yeah. it's a, I mean, if they don't already, like even newcomers, it's always like, oh, there's a new director. You know, it's like, mm -hmm. it's very small. Like, I, I feel like, you know, if you're like pitching to like, you know, the major like five like music labels, there's not that many of them. It's the same commissioners. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's changed a little bit, but I don't. I don't think so. Like, and it's like there's a couple reps, literally like five that rep all the directors, and it's, it's a very small world. So like they see mm -hmm. you when you're new, and then if you keep coming on, then you, uh, as a director, you usually end up getting signed to one of those, you know, one of those companies, so that you don't have to deal with all yeah. the producing headache. Like you don't want to like you don't want to be like booking the crew in like Europe and then having to you know what I mean? It's like you just let them handle that, and yeah, the mm -hmm. lo the longer you stay in it and the ser the more serious like the the better it goes. It's like, I, I've, I've seen that. A lot. I, I, I still can't believe that like in a good way that like, you know, Joe Lavisi is still like slaying it. I was like, wow. Cause like, mm -hmm. he was doing it before I was doing it. And then, you know, I, I'm still, yeah. but, he, but he's still doing it, you know? And that's, that's that longevity. And it's even longer for movies. I mean, like movies, God, it's yeah. like, you can't have a, like I DP'd for like 10 years, 10 years of 
big a, a movie DP. It's like, would you shoot like five movies? Like it's not, it's, yeah. no, it's nothing. Those people, mm-hmm. the feature DPs to have that cl- quote unquote clout, whatever, to like, to be at that level. It's like, like it's like 30, 40 years of shooting movies. Yeah. That's crazy. Um, one thing that I thought was, um, always interesting. It, a lot of your YouTube videos aren't on your YouTube anymore. Because I was trying to go back. I think you even had like a bunch of podcasts up there as well. Um, are they just on private now? The cinematography database is like old YouTube stuff. Yeah. Well, there was like the, the first wave of my YouTube channel mm-hmm. was like movie breakdowns. And that's what got yeah. like me and the company like pretty well known for like the general film industry. Um, but those are like <laughs> copyright nightmares. And I've, yeah. I've been through a, a whole bunch of stuff so we ended up killing like 40 of those or something like that there was there was a lot it was like a mm-hmm. year or two of content that we just had to kill and then yeah then i did like tutorials and reviews and i was just kind of like doing stuff you know kind of like anybody yeah. who's like new to youtube or instagram whatever it's like let's make a review let's make a tutorial let's go to nab let's you know and just trying trying to do mm-hmm. stuff and it was cool and i like doing those but now that i now that i'm doing this this game and, and things I feel like are a little bit more cleaned up for like what I'm going for. I look back at those and I'm like, eh, no, thank you. That's not really, that, that's like a, that was like the lead up to where we're kind of currently yeah. at. And I'm not, yeah. I don't usually leave like a breadcrumb trail. I'm like, well, we're going to just take that out. That doesn't, <laughs> that doesn't so much happen anymore. Mm-hmm. And then people, you know, YouTube is like at this point to me, like uh, a little annoying, like just the amount of comments <laughs> that come, like I had like a catalog, like I would get like, I was like, just like without even making new videos, it was still like, uh, like maybe like a, 200,000 views a month. It was, it was still a lot from like just yeah. how YouTube works. And there was money that was coming from that. But for the mm-hmm. most part, I use the channel to like talk about what I'm doing now. That's what, okay. what makes it interesting for me. And so I was still just getting like flooded with comments from a video from like three years ago being like, this camera sucks. You don't know what you're talking about. And I was like, I don't even, I'm like, this has nothing to do with what I'm <laughs> doing like, now. Yeah, this is like. And this is how yeah. you know me. Like this is like the first yeah. time you're seeing me. And then if you ever go to see how, like what I'm doing now, it's like, oh, that's the asshole. No, that doing. makes sense. I'm just like, this is not good. This is bad branding. Like I yeah. can't, I can't do it. So, you know, I, a lot of people wish that I, I left them and they, they were helpful for some people, but I look at them like it was like a, like a concert or something like that. It's like, I did that. It happened. And yeah, but it's not if there you were anymore. there. Yeah, exactly. Good, yeah. But yeah, no, definitely. Yeah. Um, because I was looking back and just like thinking back, cause I, I consumed a lot of your content in the beginning. It was definitely helpful. Um, just getting started and whatnot. I think I probably, I want to say you were doing that probably about like three or four years ago, correct? Mm-hmm. Probably yep. three years ago. Yeah. So definitely that was what helped me out a lot in the beginning. Just oh, um, cool. getting started with like lighting and whatnot. I bought my first 120D, all that kind of stuff. Nice. So that stuff was really helpful in the beginning. And then, um, but yeah, one thing, uh, one thing that I always remembered you talking about was the, um, your Craigslist hustle back in the day. <laughs> um, yeah. I thought I found that really interesting. And even still, like uh, probably a few years ago, definitely Craigslist still, I was able to, um, what's it called? I was able to get quite a few jobs off there and that actually turned into something big. Sometimes it's not the best. I don't think it's definitely not the best anymore, but um, what would you recommend people to start out? Like, what would you say? Um, I don't know. Some people who just want to hustle in the beginning, what are some ways that you would um, suggest for them to kind of like start getting jobs and kind of like what you were doing, but modern day, you know what I mean? Yeah. Well, I would say Instagram is a, is a, is a, <laughs> yeah, is, a is a monstrous yeah. force. You know, it really depends on, and it's, it's hard to tell in the beginning, but like what mm-hmm. you want to do, like once, you, once you find out what you want to do, things just become easier. And then, you know, my advice is to ask for what you want and it's like really generic weird advice but it's like you need to like figure out what it is that you really like and you're you're going to kind of dedicate yourself to and then find out who can help you get that and then ask them for it not that they're going to give it to you but i don't mean ask like directly but i mean like make it so that that happens and it's like super generic but it's like Mm -hmm. i knew that i liked hip-hop videos because like i watched a lot of them and i was like these look like fun they turned out they were not but those look like fun to shoot um yeah and I found those directors. I found those DPs and I just, mm-hmm. I'm, on, I'm, I'm in Boston and this is my space. So there's no, like, there's no DMing these people, like the kind of ones, <laughs> but it's not like that. Yeah. You know, there's no roundabout way to like say hi, really. It's, it's a little bit different back then. And I just got into it. I was like, hey, I like your work. I like that music video you just shot. I found all the DPs. It's not that hard. Yeah. I'd be like, 
I love your music videos. They're so cool. And like, here's one I shot. I know I'm like just beginning, just wanted to say what's up. And I still talk to those DPs because there's like 20 of them. There's not that many. Yeah. And we still talk to each other and they use my software. And it's like, it's... That's cool. That's it. You know, like find out what yeah. you want to do, find out who does it and just try to be cool. Like help them. Just let them know that yeah. you're interested. Like these DPs, if even if like you think that like they're superstars, people don't really know them. So it's like they really like, I think, you know, maybe directors, it's a little bit, a little bit more <laughs> like as far as them being like hit up all the time but like they'll appreciate it if you're real about it if it's like slimy yeah. it's instantly like nope but if you're if you're real it's like hey i really like your work and i'm aspiring cinematographer everyone knows what that's <laughs> like everyone knows what it's like to be like that yeah. so you just talk to the people who are really doing it and just kind of keep track of what's up if you can meet up at some point say hi and it's it's a small world that you just have to know what you want and try to make it happen with whatever you have yeah Definitely. No, I think that's definitely really good advice. And that's what the advice a lot of people give. And um, it's really nice hearing it from someone who is so seasoned and definitely did so many videos um, at such a high level. So that's definitely cool to hear that. Um, I think a lot of people appreciate that because, yeah. Um, but, yeah, so let me pull up a question right here. Um, what are some of the artists that you've uh, shot for? Like, what are some like the key music video artists that you have shot for back in the day? So I started off in, in Boston. So I shot for mm -hmm. Slane. It was like kind of the biggest uh, artist in Boston. He went on to be mm -hmm. like in Gone. Ba no, ba what are the, uh, I forget now, some, some pretty big movie. And <coughs> then from there I shot for KRS-One. And then for, uh, it was a D12, I forget the name of the band back then, the, the hip hop labels. Mm -hmm. And then uh, when I moved to New York, I started, I shot something for Busta Rhymes. He was like a featured, you know, this is like. Okay, sick. Um, and then started to shoot like stuff for like the New York scene. So like Jim Jones. And then we got hooked into Def mm -hmm. Jam. Like we shot like all the Def Jam low budget videos, <laughs> like all of them. <laughs> so I, you know, nice. it's like, like countless featured ludicrous videos. Um, and then we started to work with uh, Diddy's company. So we shot stuff for Diddy and then Diddy's artists, you know, because he would have artists that would be coming up. Like before they would hit the mainstream, we'd be shooting like their like up and coming videos, just cranking them. It's like, hey, could you come down with your 7D and your 5D and like shoot a thing? It's like, yes, yes, we can. We, yeah. will, we will be there. Like, does anyone ever see these videos? Who knows? I forget. Was it World Star Hip Hop? World Star Hip Hop has evolved into a different thing. But back then it was like, hey, we don't even need like YouTube. Just put it on World Star. That's all it is. Like, <laughs> you know, let's just shoot these, yeah. shoot these up and comers. And yeah. then I moved into like, um, you know, it's all hip hop in the beginning, but then I, I eventually moved full time into commercials. But uh, along that way, I shot for um, Justin Bieber and Iggy Pop and mm -hmm. a lot of a lot of emo bands, a lot of bachata bands. I don't remember all of their names, but that's that's kind of the roster. right there. That's awesome. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, it's definitely cool to hear the progression. Um, it's definitely interesting now kind of seeing the way music videos have shifted um, cause like the kind of scene that I'm in definitely with everyone having a DSLR and a mirrorless camera and being able to shoot like with no lights practically with the a seven S two. Um, it's really crazy, but, um, especially dealing with like labels at lower budgets now, because a lot of people, a lot of these kids are just getting signed super early on and they'll have these like kind of micro budgets for music videos. So it's kind of interesting. I mean, I think it's a really cool opportunity. And it's been something that I've been kind of dealing with and a lot of my friends have been dealing with as well. Um, but yeah, it's just interesting kind of coming into this space and trying to figure it out because I feel like things are, I don't know, just a little bit different. Oh, they're, um, they're very different. Yeah. <laughs> oh, they're very different. Like, like imagine getting paid for like, yeah, basically like, because back then it's like, you know, there were seven Ds, but no one knew how to use them. It was like, mm -hmm. Or a 5D. It was like, you still like had to kind of be from the film industry to kind of know how to make that look like anything. Now with a fucking GoPro and a gimbal, you you, pr you do okay. I mean, to be honest, yeah. like straight honest, it's like, it's about what it's always been about is like actual creativity and editing. And yeah. then also social media cloud, like, can you push the video after? You shoot a video, mm -hmm. it's 10,000 views. It's like, what is that? You know, it's like, no, you need to, yeah. you need to understand like, in my opinion, for the low budget, this is the upcoming. If you're the if you're the Ariana Grande, you do whatever you want. It's gonna get seen. Yeah, exactly. Now it's like, can you read the scene? Do you know the <laughs> audience well enough to make a video that's like they're gonna tag their friend in it when it comes out? Like you mm -hmm. have to read the social media scene around that artist. So it's like you have to be more everything. Like you're you're more about yeah. like the director's more about distribution. Back then it was like, 
oh, we'll make a video, we'll put it on BET and see how it goes. You know, it's, but now it's like, no, you, the directors and the DPs, uh, I hope the DPs do as well. It's like, you need to know who their audience is. You need to know what they think looks good. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, the whole yeah. dance scene, the whole gimbal dance video scene right now, it's like, it'd be silly to ignore that. Like, that is probably how you should shoot the dance number if you want it to, like, a clip from it to go yeah. viral or something like that on TikTok or whatever the fuck. It's like, yeah. you need to know that stuff. But yeah, back then you got paid to, to whip out the SLR and make it look decent. <laughs> now it's like, that's not, I think the battle is really, is way more creative than it is like, I made a nice image. That's not, that's not step one anymore. It's like, now there's like a huge line between like the actual budgeted music videos and then like, We've kind of lost like the middle tier, I think is what's basically happened, which is rough because that's where you start to get money to experiment with like having cranes and crew. So mm-hmm. I'm not really sure how that transition looks anymore because I don't know about mid-tier music videos. It's pretty much like, hey, we just show up with a camera and it's still going to look good. It could still be like you know, yeah. 50 million views think- and go viral. And there's a big step to go to like Ariana Grande's last video with like, you know, mm-hmm. five days yeah. shooting fully crew. It's a big difference. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. See, yeah, I don't know. It's tricky. What budget would you say mid um, tier music videos would be at? Mid would be like 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 ten thousand to a hundred thousand, something like that. Because mm-hmm. like, what are you gonna do? Because like, even now with the gear, be even if gear was free, a hundred grand in Los Angeles, it's like you could get certain locations. You're mm-hmm. going to need to work with certain crew. That's just how it works. You're going to be yeah. union. And it's like, so what are you going to get done? Back in the day, it was like you would do uh, the companies that did well. And there's, I could like name the five directors who did this. It's like you sit up in one stage and you make one or two really good looking videos. I, I'm sorry, setups. <clears throat> Maybe you shoot two videos, something like that. And, mm-hmm. you know, you look at the progression of, you know, Hannah Lux Davis. It's like. That's what she did. That's what a lot of directors did. It's like, let's make one mm-hmm. like professional looking scene, you know, and then that translates, you know, and she's, she's done that really well with, um, you know, Rob Witt was shooting for her during that whole scene. And that's pretty much like the mid tier. And then when you get like the big tier, it's like, cool, let's hit up five of these really good locations. And that's like a million or something like that or 500. Mm-hmm. It, it depends. There's you know, the money is different depending on like the the labels and the production companies but like yeah like 100 grand you're probably gonna get like one or two like real like it's like if you looked at it real quick it's like oh that's like a real quote-unquote music video right you could probably pull that Mm -hmm. all together with like build the set light it correctly have the hair and makeup everything matches it's like oh wow great you actually color graded it well color grading is different these days for me color grading used to cost money it was like now everyone has resolved so i'm not sure how that works out but for us it was like oh my god we're actually gonna go to a da vinci and like sit there so i guess that's how old i am Mm -hmm. but that costs money it's like oh there's ten thousand gone right let's go sit at like a company three it's like that's that's a favor for 10 grand you know what i mean Mm -hmm. i would say something like that but that doesn't you know but these days you could do it i just show up with an a7s and edit it myself and slay it you know what i mean it it could be like yeah that could that could take you but it's that doesn't necessarily translate to like oh, here's a million dollars. Like now can you run the whole crew and like do a bigger one? You know, yeah, you still, you still need the, the middle problem. tier to get how to yeah. learn how to do that. It's like, hey, there's a hundred people exactly. here. Who knows how to run this set? It's like, oh, I shot my last one by myself. Uh, what are we going to yeah, do? Yeah, exactly. I think that's a problem that a lot of people are having, especially uh, coming from the San Francisco area because there's a music scene out here and there's definitely been a lot of um, hot artists coming out. So definitely artists need music videos. So we've been having the run and gun music videos and then they get signed to a label Mm -hmm. and then they come to these directors with like budgets anywhere from 5,000 to 10,000 to 20,000. And um, a lot of them don't know how to step up that production uh, level, you know? So it gets a little bit tricky. They don't know how like an actual set runs. So that's a problem that I've been seeing uh, especially in this area because, um, I don't know, we just have so many artists coming out and then it's a little bit tricky. And then those artists aren't that educated because they haven't been yep. on yep. sets like that as well, you know. So it's a little bit of a miscommunication or I would say um, lack of education. So, yeah, I don't know. I think definitely, oh, you go for it. Let me say, so you guys need, and every, it's the same thing in Boston because I try to talk to people here. Um, I'm like, you need a Luga <laughs> or an Andrew Listerman. I'll just say their names. Uh, Luga and Andrew, when I was around, were like, you know, P- PMs, PAs even, you know, at the time. Mm-hmm. But they came up under very big directors in huge companies and they learned how that runs and then they started yeah. their own company and now they're mm-hmm. London Alley and they're riveting entertainment. 
I knew those companies when they had had no had nobody. They're like just they're mm-hmm. like, hey, I started a company. Everyone's like, cool. I bet you did. Have fun with that. Like that's real cute. Like, and now they are what they are. That's because they're producers. Mm-hmm. You need producers. Producers look at the yeah. the label relationship. They look at the money. They look at putting the crews together, and they look at bringing in the directors. And then they know how to make the whole thing run. If you don't have those people, it doesn't matter if you're like the best director or DP in the world. You can't produce the job. It's like, wouldn't it be great if we had this location? And, and like, I really need a balloon light. It's like the one setup. It's one balloon. It's going to have to probably be Union. Who can mm-hmm. make that happen here? Nobody, right? No one. How are you going to get that together? It's not going to work. And like, mm-hmm. And it's like, so if you don't have those producers that know how to put together those projects, it's hard to be a DP and get that kind of toy. Um, mm-hmm. it, for the DP, it's like, how do I get the tools that we need to make it look like that to give the director what they want? For the director, it's like, how do we even manage the money? Like, how do you, it's like, cool, here's a check. Here's a 50K check. Like, how do, yeah. you, how do we make sure that this goes right? <laughs> no one, like, leaves with it and just, like, runs away and the, yeah. the job happens and then... How do we know that the company is that the production company is going to pay the crew, right? There's like a mm-hmm. lot of crew. They're like, oh, a brand new music video production company? No, thank you. They're like, we've been burned by this enough times. We're not starting this. It's like, so you have to have enough respect from like just the, like the gaffer that could pull it off. It's like, they're like, I'm not working for this. Like, no, thank you. I don't care what the rate is. Like, I know, what, I know how these go down. So you need these producers that know how to run the companies. Like, mm-hmm. and the, for my generation, it was Luga and, and Andrew. And it's still kind of them <laughs> as far as like the younger, <laughs> the younger generation, as far as I see in LA. Yeah. So you need the producer, you need the, you need that business back end, you know, just director and DP. It's like, you're the kids, you, you're running, a, you, you're running around, you know, you get to have the yeah. fun. Someone needs to hold down the business and, and make it flow. Mm-hmm. So you need to hit up the MBA students that also want to be in the film industry. And that's, that's one of the more challenging things. Those are the, those are the people that eat the stress too. You talk about like the most stressed out people on set, it's going to be those uh, producers trying to keep the circus going. Definitely. Well, yeah, that was really helpful. Um, I have a few questions here from people. Um, Base Prob wants to know, will you ever be bringing back your old videos? We kind of touched on this, so kind of sounds like you're going to f- hone in and focus on um, uh, Cinetracer and kind of stay in that lane, correct? Yeah, at least for for this bit. What I would like to do to kind of integrate that sort of thing is that I used to take pic. I, I'd find pictures and you know talk about what's going on. Now mm-hmm. I can just make that movie yeah. setup in 3D and release it as a game. And I'm I'm gonna try to we're gonna do our first one of those before final release as like a test. But mm-hmm. it'll be basically like you know like a video game tutorial, except you get to just walk around the set that sort of thing. And maybe you, awesome. maybe you set up some stuff. So that's the kind of thing I have in mind. And then also as like a as like a teaching platform, is that like. It's not fully set up yet, but you can download each other's maps. So, like, someone could go set up a whole scene with the lights and all this stuff. It's like, and like, you know, drop all of their knowledge and experience into this setup. And then we can share that. Um, I could make a way of mm-hmm. sharing that on like a website or through the game. And so people could teach each other. That's the way I'd kind of rather do it. Cause like, I, I don't, you know, I, I guess I can teach, but I think that like there's people who are actively shooting. It's like, I would love to just see your setup. In the 3D, how did you yeah. like that? How did you like that shoot for like this? I could talk to Chris Props. I'm like, how did you shoot that Ariana shot? He's like, like this, and it's just yeah. Spend 10 minutes dropping some you know 3D C stands around. It's like that's what it looked like, and that's that's mm-hmm. that's that's not free knowledge normally. You had to be on set and see that, or like you know yeah. know those techniques, and so that's the way I I see kind of like giving back to the community again, like we were kind of doing with like you know teaching and that sort of stuff. But it's a way that's safe for me to do it because I, I could make those videos again, but I'm going to run into the same copyright issues, especially with Article 13 coming down. It's like, that's, it's just not allowed. So I'm going to mm-hmm. try to do it in my own way that is, again, legal that I can actually do. Awesome. Yeah, it would definitely be. I, I couldn't imagine how viral a, a Seven Rings breakdown would be. That would be really cool to see. Um, definitely, your, I remember seeing your humble breakdown i was listening mm. to the podcast with justin od show that you guys had um but yeah that was really that was a really sick breakdown that was one of my favorites and that got me yeah, in was trouble nice. that got <laughs> that got me in trouble that got yeah. my agency in trouble gersh that got uh the director <laughs> mm-hmm. that got the dp in trouble that like we had like that was as bad as it got and like yeah we we had to take that down and then everyone else made their own video about it but like those people aren't beholden to the film industry so they don't give a fuck they're like whatever yeah but like they called us 
Like the DP, mm-hmm. I don't, I, maybe I, should, I can't, but he was in like Asia. He was in Asia time zone. He was like, this needs to go away. I was like, okay, we'll get rid of it. <laughs> yeah. Wow. That probably, yeah, that's crazy. That was the end of it. I was uh, like, we're done. We yeah, can't, we can't, we can't do this. Like we can't do I like this. how you still have the uh, Casey Neistat one up though. I'm sure you probably got some type of okay from Casey and Samsung, hopefully. Um, yes. I'm, prob- I'm sure you probably did, yeah. Yeah, I, Casey he, said it was he, okay, and then he yeah, probably and, talked to someone, but that doesn't stop their lawyers from being like, no, 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 like, we don't yeah. care. Like, But we, I left it. It's probably not long for this world, though. It is still there, I think, though. Yeah, yeah, no, I, that one's definitely useful. I really like that one. Um, that was a really cool setup as well. Um, let me see what other questions we have. I think we have one more. Uh, I don't know how to... L Y I L Y on the fly uh, wants to know favorite music video director. Hmm, that's that's interesting. Um, huh. You can name multiple. You don't have to go all at once, or yeah, I mean, like, just one. I, know, I still come from like director's label. If people know what that is anymore, mm-hmm. it's like you know the Spike Jones and that whole era. You know, mm-hmm. Mark Romanek. It's like those were to me. That's just like you know being nostalgic and like golden age like you know thinking that music videos are like also art you know it's like wow we're like you know bjork and like that whole era and it's just like every anyone on the if you guys don't know you can look i don't know if they still saw that shit but like look up director's label i don't know maybe it's on youtube or something if you can buy it that's cool like on amazon Mm -hmm. just that whole roster that's like why i got into it you know and spike jones kind of laced in like shooting films still with skateboarding culture and these big music videos that were like the a viral equivalent of the time, like, you know, billions of people are watching these things. Mm-hmm. You know, that was one director and one DP and like a crew of like 50 people making, making something that they thought was creative, you know, and it, it's mm-hmm. not the, it's not the machine it is now, you know, today is like, I feel like the ROI on music videos has to be <laughs> really clear to spend like anywhere near a million dollars and they're going to be sponsored by Audi and it's like, you know, or a movie. And it's, mm-hmm. it's, it's not the same back then. I feel like they were, they had free reign, you know, Spike Jones, Lance Accord, who's also, who's a director now. They really just got to do what they thought was cool, you know? And, yeah. and I hope that we come back to, I think music videos now, it seems like they've, um, the money has returned for the upper echelon because of people have, fi- like the music industry's figured out how to make money again. So that means they mm-hmm. have it to spend and the major artists, it's, it's going to be worth it still, you know? And I think it definitely yeah. is. It's, there's still like the music videos is still the most watched, one of the most watched categories on YouTube. And there's businesses and money to be made from it. And, and I hope that people like the Daniels, um, that directing team, that more of those come out of like the fact that you can just have like a, a funny idea, grab a camera and make it because that's what you wanted to do and you thought that would be cool or funny. I hope that more, more directors like the Daniels on the younger side come out because like, I feel like they just came out of like left field or whatever the phrase is. Like, they're like, we mm. like weird shit. That's our treatment. Like, how about this skateboard dog that we're going to skate around the skate park? <laughs> it doesn't matter what yeah. you film it with. Film it with your phone. It's still funny. Mm-hmm. I, I hope that more of that stuff starts to, can happen and be economical so that people can make a living doing it. They figured it out, I guess. Yeah. Cool. Um, I think I had one last question here. Um, so kind of how, like, when you first started out, you were filming with, like, a... Um, you said the DSLRs, but then you had like the old skateboard camera, except all those kind of older type cameras. Mm. If you were to, let's say you were 20 again and you wanted to get back into the music video scene and you had like a few thousand dollars, is there a specific camera that you would pick up um, that you kind of enjoy the look of and you would get back into the music video scene with? Is there like a specific setup that you would probably just grab? Am I the DP or am I the director, yeah, the director DP, let's, producer? Let's, let's Oh yeah, because that is a role right now. Oh yeah, um, oh yeah. You let's let's maybe thing. say you want to go the DP route because I think that's something that um, I don't know. I think I think that's something that we need more of, especially is more people uh, specific roles. I was gonna get into that as well, but I think that's one thing that's kind of helped me as well. Like in the music video, saying not doing everything. Mm. And I've been trying to um, just even just like building up and whatnot. It's just having a DP on set and having specific roles and trying to do better at that. And, um, but yeah, let's just go DP. Like, let's say you wanted to just start DPing music videos for directors, low budget stuff. Yeah. Can I also be the color grader? Cause that's the combo that's working. It seems like, but yeah, yeah, I was, yeah. So if, if you're just 
I'll, I'll, I'll start with the short version. If you're the director DP, you need to just move past Raw. Like, there's just no fucking way you're going to pull it off. Like, you're not going to mm-hmm. direct it, produce it, make it good, figure out the social back end, and color grade, and lighting. Mm-hmm. There's no way. You better pick up, like, a Canon, shoot standard profile, don't even color grade it. Like, you're not going to figure out all those things. But if you're just the DP, like, you're just there for, like, look, the framing, hopefully the back end, because, like, it, no one knows how to grade at that point. Then mm-hmm. you want to pick up a raw. You want to pick up something that has a raw. Like, and I don't shoot those level cameras right now. Like, I don't really know them, but it seems something like a Black Magic, something like mm-hmm. Ursa 4.6K. Any of those, like Confinity, any of these, like things that will get you to the point where, like, you can start to understand what's actually happening in the image, and then you can grade it after. You you have to start learning that, you know, and yeah. It, for me, it's like we we I did some film and I kind of learned it there. The film DPs were forced to learn it. You just basically couldn't skip that step. Now it's like, oh, it's on auto and it still will look okay. You can still have a career doing that. Mm-hmm. But until you understand how the lighting affects the image and how you can grade it and like really just do thousands and thousands of shoots and tests of that, you know, you really don't understand lighting enough to move on to like a big set where you basically light it before you get there. It's like you don't get to like those mm-hmm. sets, they're lit. The DP shows up. They knew what they were going to look like. It looks like that. They shoot it and they leave and they keep going to the next set. And to get to that point where you need to, you can light in your head on paper, you're just talking. You, you light it by talking to people. You don't get to look through the viewfinder. You don't get to be like, mm-hmm. oh, bring it down a little bit. It's like you light in your head before you get there. You have to understand the lighting camera <laughs> grading relationship <laughs> and the lighting parts is tricky. So you want to have a raw camera because it's kind of like for nothing if you're yeah. on, a, on like a pure 8 bit, you know, crushed blacks everything it's like you need to get into the raw ecosystem so anything that will uh, give you the ability to do that you're lucky now you have resolve for free mm-hmm. i had final cut seven and like premiere yeah. 1.5 yeah there was no grading tools in those even if we had rods mm-hmm. like you couldn't do it like us early days having to grade red footage was a nightmare we didn't have computers we didn't have that software it's, it was mm-hmm. ian had to write the software for us to hack it like it was <laughs> it was the whole thing but yeah i would hop into like probably i would say the black magic ecosystem and just start getting into the um yeah the raw workflow but if you're the director and like your job is bigger picture you need to skip that because i see pe- like it's wor- mm-hmm. it's worse to put out poorly graded raw in my opinion it's like why does this look weird like yeah. you, you don't want that just shoot like look all- just shoot yeah, like I, a standard I, I, a7s or canon profile and just call it a day mm-hmm. yeah no i definitely i hate when i see especially even just like really bad graded log footage oh from yeah like a sony oh, it's terrible it's horrible it looks all like the, the blacks are all like creamy and it's just weird they'd be, yeah they'd be then, better put on auto exposure because they do an okay job mm-hmm. you know like yeah yeah no i definitely agree cool well that was really helpful um yeah i've been especially like when i do like my own dp projects i usually just use like the gh5s mm-hmm. D, try and get 10 bit um that's usually what i've been doing so that's been cool when i when i don't have a dp so it's like not too much of a workflow for me, but it's definitely just enough where I can get some type of color in there. That's cool. You just don't want it to slow you down. And and I learned, yeah. like, we didn't touch on, like, lighting, like, what kind of lighting stuff to bring out. But it's like, you it, on a music video, you want to shoot more. <laughs> in most cases, you just want to mm-hmm. get more shots because it's, you can't show the same shot twice in most music video edits. So it's like, so you shouldn't spend too much time on it. You're like, you you have an overall quality that you'll hit given your production value parameters and you mm-hmm. just got to keep moving like you should watch like i was on set with um joseph khan and chris props for taylor swift something blah blah i forget which video it was and the mm-hmm. speed that those people work is insane like you couldn't follow how fast joseph runs around the set and it's he was wow. in, we were in like a mansion oh heck a castle new york city he just runs. He's like, we're going to mm-hmm. shoot there. And, and then we're going to go over here. And then we're going to put her there. It's like literally running. And the whole crew is yeah. just behind him. You not take, you can barely even write down what he said. And then when <laughs> they shoot it, it's just that fast. The difference wow. is they have the money. They have like 30 grips. And they're, they shoot mm-hmm. rapid fire. And because they have the crew, it looks good. But yeah. I think that that pace is how you have to work with two days of shooting to get a good music video, even like three minutes of like never show the same shot. It's all new stuff, like all perform, mm-hmm. you know, good stuff. So don't, you, you don't want to break that pace. And it's a hard thing to do because like as a DP, it's like, oh, I'd like to sit here and get the lighting and take my time. But it's like, yeah. unless it's that kind of look where you're going to pull that, you know, like you're like, we have four setups. That's it. You, these better be fucking amazing. <laughs> like you better get like some mm-hmm. insane stuff. You just want to move fast. So don't, don't let like, 
an external recorder because it's like a little bit better grading slow you down you know what i mean it's like yeah if it's like no go fast that's why the gimbals are such good tools at this point it's like we had delayed dolly mm -hmm. track but now you know we're not so much it's like oh we have it the move we do two takes we better start moving to the next location you know? yeah so it's like don't let lights don't let that stuff slow you down in the begin like in the beginning too too much as the director, if you're the DP, you got to, that's the opposite fight. You're like, no, 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 let me, <laughs> let me get this shot. But like, yeah. big picture, good looking footage that's not enough makes a bad music video. No one gets mm -hmm. hired again. Yeah. No, I definitely get in that fight with uh, my DP sometimes. Definitely. I'm just like, let's just go. And then like, we, we end up tweaking lights and whatnot. And, but I also feel like as a, uh, because I am really into cinematography, I feel like as a director, I have been very, uh, almost like, I don't know, feel like sometimes I'm kind of like more DP based, I guess. Like I could want to like focus on like camera settings and definitely like the lighting as well. It's really important to me, I guess. I don't know. Um, What's well, I know some people are, are more technical like that. It's, it depends on who you are. It's like, you know, the, yeah. the typical trifecta, which may be changing these days <laughs> for smaller sets is like director, producer. Well, I guess this is more than the trifecta, but it's like director, producer, AD and DP. Each mm -hmm. of them have different roles to fill. They can't, yeah. Be friends. They they're fr we're all doing the same <laughs> battle, but directors yeah. fighting for what they want, right? Like mm -hmm. vision, like we want these shots. DP's trying to make it look the best it can. AD's trying to get it done on time. Producers trying to The director should fight. You should hear Joseph. You should hear these people. They're like, "I want 10 zebras." They're like, "Producer like, what the hell are you talking about? 10 zebras. You get one." <laughs> Yeah. Right? And then the AD is like, the DP is like, I need two hours to light this location. AD is like, what the fuck is your problem? He's mm -hmm. like, okay, you get 30 minutes. And, and so they have to fight that. They have to yeah. battle it out. But with all of them together, that's how it comes together. So it depends on who mm -hmm. you're fighting. If we're talking to just the DPs, it's like, oh yeah, you get that pre-light. You get that time. But if yeah. you're the director, it's like, don't let the DP fuck up your shot list. Who cares if mm -hmm. one shot looks good? They need to all happen. You know, so yeah, exactly. it, it depends on who you're what's your point of view is i think on the production mm -hmm. nice well cool man yeah we're coming towards the end here um is there anything that you want people to look forward to or to go do um if they made it to the end of this podcast <laughs> well thanks for having me on man uh really yeah. appreciate that uh i'd say hit me up on instagram cinematography mm -hmm. db i could ask me anything you want and whatever i'll pretty much people like Many, I'm sure you too. Like many times, it is like, "Hey, which camera do you like?" Just out of the blue, <laughs> I'll fucking respond. Yeah. I'm like, "I like this camera right now. I, I saw yeah. something about it." Like, so I'm there. That's that's where I live. Come check Tight. it out. Sweet, and definitely look forward to the uh, release of Cinetracer on Mac. This is gonna drop probably on. Let me see. On I have one with Olufemi Tutorials next week. You mm -hmm. know him? Uh, yeah. I don't know him personally, yeah. but I'm aware of that. Yeah. I know of him, yeah. And then uh, this is going to drop on the 20th. So cool. Um, I don't know if it will be dropped by then, but hopefully it should be coming out. So definitely if you guys have a, a more modern... Is there like a um, recommended specs for uh, playing the game on a Mac? We still don't know. I, it, you basically know. have to have like the latest OS, whatever that gotcha. is. I forget what it is. Like, see, I don't remember Mojave. <laughs> I don't use the Macs that much except to make this version. But you need to. Mm -hmm. You're gonna want. Here's the thing. It's a good excuse to get a new Mac. I would say that. Much. <laughs> How about that? I think that's the. There we go. That's what it is. Sick. Well, yeah, cool. I think a lot of my friends have the newer iMac, so we should definitely be able to oh, iMac play. Hopefully. Yeah, iMac, iMac Pro, you're all set. The the laptops are a little bit underpowered. You don't see sketchy. Yeah, you don't see too yeah. many like professional gamers with MacBook Pros. Definitely not. Well, cool. All right, man. Well, I'm glad to have you on. I really appreciate it. Uh, make sure to follow him on Instagram. Check out the game, and I'll probably be posting more gameplay in the future when different stuff comes out. I'm probably gonna do more videos where I set up actual setups because I played before actually setting everything up and it turned into like a 20 minute video because i forgot all the controls <laughs> and it was it was pretty bad i was like well, they, trying to figure stuff out they changed uh, quick the too so that's not yeah. your fault yeah but um definitely i'm probably gonna set it up first next time and then talk about it um but yeah it's definitely cool um i was just thinking about like all the stuff you added to the uh characters as well it was pretty funny like being able to control troll their heads and whatnot some stuff was a little like crazy looking like i like the way you can like tilt someone's head was pretty funny so oh, it, gets, it was a good time it gets weird i mean on your on your <laughs> end is you're making content it's like i mean there's, the, the youtube is a specific battle short form is a different idea 
But mm-hmm. like one of my biggest videos, it was right after all my <laughs> breakdowns got taken down. I was like, the fuck am I supposed to do on YouTube now? Like, what are we doing yeah. here? I think we'd like almost hit a hundred thousand. I was like, what the fuck am I supposed to do with this? Now? I literally deleted all my videos. Like this sucks. But I just, I took like my most commonly used beauty lighting setup and I made it in 3D and I talked about it for like eight minutes. I remember that. Okay, word, yeah. I have yeah, DPs now that are like doing the thing. They're like, they're like, I still use that. <laughs> they're mm-hmm. like, I never saw that setup. And let me tell you, I use it every time when we're doing that type of shoot. I was like, oh, cool. You know, so it's like, mm-hmm. if you just throw something like that out there, it's like, this is the setup I like to do with the lights. That's, mm-hmm. that's valuable. I, I learned that by nice. being on set and like, you know, a lot of the music video lighting, I learned it by being there, but you can, mm-hmm. you can distill that knowledge now, especially with, with City Designer, you could have, it was harder, but with City Tracer, it's like, yeah, like 20 minutes or something like that. You could pretty much show like your approach more or less to, to a certain situation. And that's, that's pretty valuable. And I hope that there's more, uh, you know, creators that are able to use it like that. Cool. Awesome. That was a nice little, um, outro right there thanks for listening guys uh leave a review on itunes and we'll catch you guys next time thanks